Hello? Hello? Yes. <clears throat> uh, you say that, uh, like, Prophet uh, Muhammad, he, he's not the one because in the Quran it says that the one who comes after Jesus will be Ahmed, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what about in uh, the Bible when it says the one, the Messiah, he will be called Emmanuel, but the one who came, his name is Jesus. Jesus does not mean Emmanuel. It's like different meanings. So mm. No, it's not different meaning, actually. If you, if you know what the word, do you know what Jesus means? Jesus means the anointed one, the Messiah, does not mean God is with us. Uh, <clears throat> uh, are you a student of Muhammad Hijab? I'm not a student of Muhammad Hijab. So where you get your knowledge from? I researched it, hmm. googled it. What's the meaning of Christ? Christ means the anointed one, the one anointed with oil. The so one. Jesus is the anointed one, Christ is the anointed one, both of them the anointed one? Yes. Hmm. Who told you that? <clears throat> I looked it up. How about you look it up since it's like your religion? Like you mm. should know that Emmanuel means God is with us. It does not mean anointed one. So mm. how how can you say that uh, Ahmad is different than Muhammad, even though they share the same roots? It's not the no, same. You but see, like when you say to me, root. I search that. Where do you get this from? Can you show me? I can send you the link. It's uh, what link? All your uh, it's a Christian website. Mm. As biblical scholars, they're the one who said that. Oh, mm. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I didn't get it from well, myself. So. As as I know that Yeshua mean the Savior, the one exactly. who will rescue, the one who will save the world. Yeah, yeah. This is not that the anointed one. He is the anointed one for sure, but this is not the name. The name Yeshua mean the Savior. You are saying to me that Yeshua or Jesus mean the anointed one, that's it. And Emmanuel is not the same, right? Yeah, Emmanuel means God is with us. Well, this is one of his names. We believe in Jesus that he is God with us. Well, Muhammad, uh, it's the same thing with Muhammad and Ahmed. Muhammad no, my friend, no. Muhammad, he said that the, 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 the person, Jesus, just, you know, when he say that God with us, which means people, they will believe that he is God with us. This is why they will call him God. And you Muslim, you say to us, where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Well, so, and, uh, so Yeshua, Yeshua or Yeshua, in Arabic we say Yeshua, is a Hebrew verb for Yesha, uh, Yesha which is mean the one who saved, the one who delivered, the one who rescued. So even his name conveys to us a very clear name of God. <clears throat> uh, it does not mean that he is God. He, he Savior means someone who saves. It does not mean that he is God. Mm. He wears the... Who is the one who saved the world? Is it uh, angel? Is it uh, man? Is it God? The one who saves the world? Mm. I don't know because I don't believe. I don't believe in... That like God he became a man and then he died for us. It just doesn't make sense. Because what's the point? Like if God died for us, then we could just sin. Like, why would God need to do that? Nobody just... no, but first of all, you have a very funny idea of Christianity. Who is who is the one who said that he need to do that? God he he did what he did because he loved us. People they say if, if God is it is real, let him show himself. Okay, he came to you. If God is real, if you are God, make this man come from death. Okay, he did. Make this blind see. Okay, he did. Uh, 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 control the nature. Okay, he did. Uh, create from the bird of mud. He okay, he did. Uh, 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 <clears throat> stay alive, and he his you know he he did. Still until now, he is alive for for, uh, uh, for thousand of years. So, you don't believe that God need to do so? Who said that God he need to do so, or even he have to do so? We as a Christian, when we say that God he came to us and he died for us. We are not talking about the death of God. God never died. That God who came to us in the form of a man, the flesh of a man, that person, that flesh was killed. But God is always alive. And Jesus is exist have nothing to do with his birth. As an example, Jesus said, before Abraham, I am. <clears throat> and the Bible all over says that God's name is I am. So each time Jesus says I am, he is saying I am God. And this is what Emmanuel presents. That he is Hosha or Yeshua or Yeshua, which is God is with us, and this is what you can find in the Bible. Uh, 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 if you go to the book of Number, if you go to the book of uh, uh, 
M many books actually you know uh, I think uh, number 13 16 you will find the names there present to us who is Jesus so eel eel uh, is a word mean God now the question here for you I don't know if you are with me from the beginning my friend you're a prophet said with... you're a prophet said that, that the most important name for Allah or the dearest names for Allah are Abdullah <clears throat> and Abdul Rahman okay so why it is not the name of Muhammad uh, it doesn't have to be the the name of Muhammad what does it have to be well I don't know you tell me because if Allah the first name he wrote in his chair is the name of Muhammad why this name will not be the first dearest name is, is it Muhammad is the most dearest person to Allah yeah hmm. So how yeah, come he is. he is the most dearest person to Allah, but his name is not the most de dearest? Are you saying to me, Muhammad, he got the wrong name? Well, that's exactly <laughs> like what you said about the the Messiah is supposed to be Emmanuel, but his name became was Jesus. It's like it's you're saying. No, no, no. He will be called, my friend. He he will be called. He will be called. God is with us. He will be called. Okay. This is in the Bible. There's no names. In the Bible, there's no names. All those are not names. They are titles. So he will be called Yeshua is not even a name. It is a title for the Savior Same as the Christ same as the Christ now is Muhammad a name or it it's a title Muhammad is a name, but he, he is also called Abdullah title because he was also a slave of God so. mm, But you see his uh, but, but but the name he got the wrong name his name is Muhammad not Abdullah You see here your names which are the dearest to Allah are Abdullah and Abdul Rahman so if Muhammad is a person chosen by Allah and he is the one who inspired the mother of Muhammad to change his name from Qatham to Muhammad if this name is if this dream is coming from Allah that's mean the name of Muhammad should not be Muhammad should be Abdullah or Abdul Rahman and here we have a problem why Muhammad his name is uh, uh, Muhammad anyway uh, Muhammad is the name of God the praised one if Muhammad is the praised one, who is the praised two? Uh, what do you mean the praised two? The praised one means the one who receives praise. Okay, so, thank you very much, guys. The praised one, he is the one who receives praise. Do you Muslim praise Muhammad or praise God? Uh, we praise we we praise God ultimately, we, but we also praise Muhammad as a prophet. But hmm. we don't we don't praise him. As so why God. Allah His name is not the praised one? If this is what mean the, the one who receive a praise right do Allah receive a praise yes correct yes okay so yes. why his name is not the praised one and that name given to Muhammad uh, Allah does have a name that means the praise one I think Al Hamid thank you Al very much means the... see guys Allah and yeah. Muhammad they have both the both the same name Al Hamid and Muhammad both of them they are the praised one but Muhammad is is a human name like it means the praised one and, and like He's a human. It no, mean no, my God. friend. No, my friend. My friend. The praised one cannot be a name for a human because how how a human can be praising a human, a human who is a sinner. Is your prophet a sinner? Yes, he is. Okay, he's a sinner. So how how he became a, how he earned that title, the praised one? Do you do you praise the sinner? Uh, <clears throat> like I don't I don't understand like the point that you're saying. Just doesn't I'm saying, my friend. Listen to me. If if Muhammad yeah. is a sinner and you agreed, which is good. So if if I am a sinner, you want to praise me for my sin? We don't praise him for his sin. We okay, so you him praise him for, for what? Thing. For what? We praise him because he did good things like despite what? having sin. Like what? Well, he he abolished in, infanticide that is burying the girls alive. That's a big fat lie, yeah. my friend. That's a big fat lie. You want me to prove it to you? This is yeah. not about burying the the girls. Have nothing to do with burying the girls, and none of the Arab burying the girls. If you if I ask you right now, can you show me the reference of burying girls? People will love. There's nothing. There's nobody burying the girls. This is a fabrication, and the Muslims have nothing to do with their own. Uh, 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 you know, if we go, let us see. <clears throat> let me show you some reference. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay. Let, we'll look with me in the screen. <clears throat> you speak Arabic, I guess, right? Yeah. All right. That's wonderful. I like it when somebody speak Arabic because that will make it easier for me. Do you see the website? What is the name of the website? Uh, the website. Hmm? It's uh, 
Uh, I can't see the address. No, no. Do you see the 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 logo? Ahl al Quran. Correct. What does that mean? The people of the Quran. All right. Those are Muslims. Correct. Yes. Okay. Tafsir al Mawuda and Nafs al Muadhaba. Tafsir al Mawuda and Nafs al Muadhaba. Wa laysa radi al Qatila. So the title is telling you what is the correct answer. It is a nafs al muadhaba when a, when a soul when a soul is buried and like you, you kill somebody and supposedly now he is killed or this person women or male or female doesn't matter is killed he is buried and then his soul is buried with him so the soul will say for what guilt I was killed it's not about the child baby read with me صدق المفسرون التفسير اللغوي لكلمة الموعودة ففسروها بأنها رضيعة أو الطفل الذي قتلها والدها خوفا من الفقر أو العار ومن ثم تم تفسير قوله تعالى وإذا الموعودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت بأن الطفل القتيل يتم سؤالها بأي جريمة تم ذبحها ومن أمثلة ذلك تفسير أضواء البيان etc etc okay and then he says to you <coughs> Uh, okay. let's say, let's, let's go to that conclusion. You see the Quran, you have two Quran here. He's, he's mentioned two Quran. One Quran says, Suilat wa Qutilat. And the other one it says قتلت سألت وقتلت وقتلت سألت سئلت and سألت and there's a huge difference and this is showing us the corruption of the Quran because there's a huge difference between سألت which means uh, uh, she asked and سئلت which means she been asked uh, بمعنى الموؤودة هي التي تتساءل وليست التي تسأل من غيرها وهي تسأل قاتلها وهو والدها بأي جريمة قتلها فالتاء في سؤالات وقتلت تاء الفاعل وفي كلتا الحياتين هناك مشكلة هي أن الطفل الموودة so, sorry guys I'm just reading for him in Arabic we'll translate uh, uh, أن الطفل الموودة الرضيع لا تتكلم لعدم علمها بشيء كما قال تعالى في سورة النحل والله أخرجكم من بطون أمهاتكم لا تعلمون شيئا remember she is an infant and here they are saying to you this is cannot be about an infant because the Quran confirmed that when a baby is born, he know nothing. He cannot talk. This is there's only one option, one exception. That is Jesus. When he is born, he speak because Jesus is different in Islam. ومن ثم فهي لن تسأل ولن تسأل. طبقا لقوله تعالى في سورة الأنبياء كما بدأنا أول خلق الخلق نعيده. Then he say, نعود لكلمة قتلت فقد تم تفسيرها كما هو في المشهور معاني اللفظ قتل وهو الذبح وإير وفاة غير الطبيعية. بينما هناك معنى آخر هو اللعن كما في قوله تعالى بسورة المعفقون قتلهم الله أن يؤفكون والمراد عنهم الله كيف يكفرون بأفاض عقبها يكذبون etc. and then ومن ثم فالمعنى لا علاقة له بقتل البنات الرضيعة ومعنى العبارة إذا الموؤودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت وإذا المتعبة استفهمت بأي جريمة لعنت أي بأي الفاض أخرى وإذا النفس المعذبة تم سؤالها لأي سبب عذبت وهو يطابق قوله تعالى في سورة المدثر ما سلككم في سقر إلى آخره. So you see my friend, this is a wrong understanding the Muslims they have and you Muslims even don't agree about it. So the Muslims they took false interpretation saying that here is about burying babies but the verses have nothing to do with burying babies. The verse is about when you kill somebody and you will kill with no guilt that, that body he did the, there is two reading one is says su'ilat and the other one sa'lat which means the quran is corrupt and both of them will lead us that there is no way it can be for a baby because the quran confirmed that babies cannot talk and they do not know and they will go always to the first stage even when, when they are created or let's say re-resurrected so the confirmation here that this has nothing to do with killing babies now we go back to zero why you praise muhammad and even if this is, uh, and, and here we go. Even though I refuted you about this, even this is not Muhammad. He brought it. If this is if this is from Allah. What you are saying to me that Muhammad he brought this. That's mean Muhammad is the one who fabricated this verse. 
Uh, actually, uh, this uh, I want to know what tap series this because there's obviously multiple tap series. Uh, I, uh, what tap series this? The one that says that it's the not guy, his name is at the Tabab, Tababi, whatever his name, you know. Tabari or Rada Rada Al Batawi Al Batawi, an Egyptian sheikh. I never scholar. heard of him. Who care? Anyway, you said to me that Muhammad he brought this, correct? That's me, Muhammad. Uh, yeah. That's me, Muhammad is the one who fabricated the Quran, because either this is coming from Allah or this is coming from Muhammad. It's coming from who? Coming from uh, from Allah through Muhammad. So I mean, what 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 favor Muhammad he have? You know, if God he gave me a verse to tell you to tell it to you, does that mean I am the one who did the favor? I'm just you told me a second ago that Abdullah is the best names, right? Which means the servant of Allah. So now you are a servant of Allah, and yet you are the one who did me a favor. No, it is Allah. Muhammad he did not even say he did not even say anything. Supposedly Muhammad he de delivered a verse from Jibril, and Muhammad he repeated the verse in front of us. So what he did? So why you want to praise Muhammad? So you gave me false verse, have false meaning, false interpretation. And now we have a prophet you praise him just because he is the one who delivered for you a verse Well, there's many ones. There's Moses. He delivered verses. There's Abraham delivered verses There's Isa. He delivered verses for you. There's 124,000 messenger of Allah. They deliver verses for you. How come their name is not the praise one? Well, you don't you believe that that Jesus uh, he's he's Emmanuel God is with us so... because he's God my friend This is God. So are you saying that Muhammad is God too? Wait. No, I'm not saying that. I'm okay, for me, you, also... you see, you, can, you cannot compare because for me, Jesus is God, is not a prophet. If I call Jesus Emmanuel and he is a prophet, that would be a problem. But if I call him Emmanuel and I believe he's God who came to us, that's not a problem. That's perfect. It should fit with the belief. So now you call Muhammad the praised one based on what? Yeah, I have a question for you. You want to you know, answer the question by question? Yes. Mm, okay. Yeah. Don't you believe that? Do you, do you believe? Uh, do you know about Elijah? Mm. Elijah the prophet. What does Elijah mean? What does that mean? It means uh, the uh, the one who God praises. Mm. Right. Muhammad Hijab. He said uh, Elijah means God is with us. No, no, he's wrong. Mm. Muhammad Hijab was wrong. Well, Elijah, Elijah means the one the one who's praised by God. So he's the a prophet, one who right? praised by God. He, Mm, man, that's God, amazing. So why are you saying that? Uh, Abdu, uh, uh, hold, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you see, I like it when Muslims, when uh, when he he give us meaning. So you are saying that God, uh, Elijah, mean the one who uh, God praise him. Yes. Where do you guess from? I looked it up. If 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 I mean you Muslims are expert in Arabic, expert in Hebrew. Uh, let us let us change the language we're talking to now to Chinese. Where you, I mean you are saying to me I looked it up. It looked like you are you are a student of Muhammad Hijab who knows nothing. What Muhammad Hijab he says God is with us. You are saying to us uh, 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 praise God. What 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 he said? Hey, Elijah Elijah means my God is Yahweh. He means the one who. Like he, yeah, he but you. As, but a second ago, you said something else. You say search Google, right? So you know, you you notice that you are saying something stupid. No, I I made a mistake. Ah, you made like... a mistake. Okay, okay. So, okay, let, let us go back to zero. So, why the name of Muhammad is the praised one if he is not your God? Because he's the the last prophet, and he was he was a good he was a good man. He never lied, and uh... he never lied. Yeah, Muhammad never lied. Yeah, his name was Al Amin. Wow, what Al Amin mean? Al Amin means the the the, the truthful one. The truthful, he trustworthy, trustworthy, correct? It's worthy, yes. Mm, okay. Did you hear about the story of Zaid? Uh, Zaid ibn Haritha. Zaid, the adopted son of Muhammad. Yes, Zaid ibn Haritha. Yes, I know. When Muhammad he went to the house of Zaid and he flirted with the wife of Zaid. When she was married to Muhammad, was Muhammad a trustworthy person or he was a bad person? He he did not flirt with her. He came to the house and he 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 was shy. He didn't even want to look at her. And Are you sure? Left. Are you sure? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. 
which interpretation you like me to read for you? Uh, what do you mean interpretation? You mean like this? This is in hadith. It's not in. Uh, you mean Sahih Bukhari or Muslim? You mean interpretation for what happened? I mean the story. Which, where where we will get the story? The story. We go to books, Islamic books, and they will tell us the stories. Correct. Let us go to some Islamic books and see if Muhammad he flirted with her or not. Give me a second. And I will make you read with me in the screen. And I'm so happy that you speak Arabic, so you have no excuse to say. I do not know. Doesn't say that. Uh... We go. And we find the story. Here we go. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi, and this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Remember, you said Muhammad is a trustworthy. Let us see. When a man he go to the house of a married woman, and he flirt with her, and he said to her that my heart is a flipping for you. Let us see. <coughs> Read with me carefully. ثم أنه عليه السلام أتى زيدا يوما يطلبه فأبصر زين بقائمة كانت بيضاء جميلة جسيمة من أتم نساء قريش فأويها فقال سبحان الله مقلب القلوب فسمعت زينب بالتسبيح فذكرتها لزيد ففطن زيد فقال يا رسول الله إذن لي في طلاقها Translate my friend زوج النبي زينب صلى الله عليه وسلم أويها قال سبحان الله فسمعت زينب بالتسبيح he told him to uh, stay with your wife. Okay, but you so translate the first, translate the first. Why you jump the first? I mean, this, this is the only sentence you saw. I mean, you read all, and only this is the only sentence you want to translate to us. Translate the rest, all of it, all of it. Well, uh, from here, go ahead. He, Muhammad, he came to Zaid Yoman seeking him. And he saw Zainab standing. Continue. He saw her. She was white and beautiful. Uh, of the woman of Quraysh. So, I think it means that he liked her. He said, Subhanallah, Muqallib al Uh And then Zainab. Translate, heard, uh, translate, uh, translate, translate. Which means he loved her. And he said. And he said, uh, Praise God, the, the changer of hearts. And then he. He okay. heard, uh, so, heard the, so the it says that Muhammad he went to the house of his own son and the wife was there alone and your prophet he flirted with her speaking loudly to the point she heard him saying that praise be to Allah the one who flipped my heart for you and it says they are fahawiha which means he fell in love with her correct yeah okay is that a trustworthy if your father come to your house and your wife she is alone and he said to her flirting words like you are sexy you man i like you mm, wow yummy huh if he says such a thing god forbid is your father or even if he is your friend or even if he is your brother is that a trustworthy person uh wait this hadith like uh, is it uh is it a weak one is it a weak one because, uh... guys is it a weak one Come on, man. Be honest. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi. This is your Islamic website, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Tafsir al Qurtubi. I have nothing to do with it. This is a story written by Muslims, about Muslims, from Muslims, about their Prophet. There's no way. If the Muslim wrote this about their Prophet, so imagine how ugly the truth is. Because always Muslims, they try Muhammad to look the most perfect man. I, For me, if you ask me, I believe Muhammad already is sleeping with this woman because he is the one who married her to Muhammad. So Muhammad obviously he married this woman to to Zaid, so he can get access to her any time because nobody will suspect that he is sleeping with her, because she is married to his own son by by, by adoption. So now Muhammad he got free access. The husband he go to work, the prophet he come home, he sleep with the wife, and the husband don't dare to ask anything. And then you will notice here. That she said that to Zaid for Fatina Zaid for Fatina, like bingo. Oh boy, this guy is sleeping with my wife already. So, right away, he went to Muhammad, says, I want to divorce this wife. She, I don't like her really. She, she's, she's hurting me with her tongue, you know. Suddenly, the guy 
he was fine with his wife the second she told him that your father was here and he flirted with me and he said that his heart is flipping for me suddenly the guy went divorce her because he said he, he knew that he became he became a pimp if he stay married to this woman he's a pimp who is going to stop muhammad who is the king of his people now this guy he is no one he is just an adopted son by khadija and then muhammad and then muhammad the, the trustworthy the one you say you, you see he's trustworthy he changed the law which is practiced for centuries of adoption which is a noble law and he forbid muslim from you know for adoption just because he want to have this woman in his bed uh well i i think this hadith is weak ah uh, I'm, I'm sure it's weak i mean we need to uh, i'm okay you can call me a month from now i'm going to feed it read with me what zainab she said here with me i want you to take attention to this وفي بعض الروايات أن زيدا تورم ذلك منه حين أراد أن يقربها. Do you see that? Each time it says here, أمس زيد فأوى إلى فراشه قال زينب ولم يستطعني زيد وما امتنع منه غير ما منعه الله مني فلا يقدر علي. زيد he came to his bed to his wife which means he wanna have sex with her and she said but he could not do it with me and nothing forbid him from doing it except Allah so he could not do it. And this is the report of Abi Asma, Nuh ibn Abi Maryam. And then, and this is mentioned coming from Zainab. And uh, she, she mentioned that. And in one, in one of the stories, that Zaid, his penis is swell each time he tried to get close to her. Do you think this is a miracle of Allah? He made the husband penis swell? Um, I don't know, like, it's just uh I mean this is a miracle uh, obviously the guy he want to sleep with his wife Muhammad now he liked the wife Allah he make the penis of the husband as well obviously it's a miracle well uh like the prophet did tell him to stay with your wife and like in the end he was human like he made mistakes we don't believe you see how Muhammad he says to him stay with your wife and five minutes ago he was flirting with the wife I mean, obviously, don't can't you tell this guy is a hypocrite? Imagine I come to a woman, I flirt with her, and then her husband come to me, says I want to divorce her, and I know I want her badly, and then I say to him, no, no, keep your wife, man, keep your wife. I mean, obviously, you come on. And even the verse saying that the verse is the verse saying Muhammad is saying that Allah told him why you are hiding, what you, why you are hiding what you have in your heart for her. So what kind of God he said to a man? Why you are hiding your lust? This is not love. This is lust. Muhammad already have many wives. You do not need one more wife. What kind of a God and what kind of a prophet? He asked a man who is sending him as a trustworthy, saying to him, why you hide what you have in your heart, which is for a woman she is married. Uh, which which verse is that? What do you mean which verse is that? Is the verse we, we mentioned, you know, the verse in the front of us, chapter 33, verse number 37. He said to the man, why you want to divorce your wife? Keep your wife for you. Keep your wife for you, man. Keep it, keep it. Eh? And then, but the, the verse saying, uh, 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 And then what is the verse? Why you are hiding what is inside you? The Muslim, they say that Allah told him that this woman, she will be yours. Why she will be his? She's married already. Well, uh, Zaid didn't want her, so. What do you I, mean, don't want her? Zaid, he never said, I don't, I don't want her until Muhammad, he went to his house and he flirted with her. You are the one who said to me, he's a trustworthy. Let us go to a different verse in the Quran. Forget about this one. Do you know that your prophet was accused to be, uh, he stole underwear? That he would never do that. Hmm. Well, let us see. As the Muslims. In chapter 3, in chapter 3, verse 161, it says that the Muslims accuse your prophet that he stole an underwear. There's no way. Like that's, well, that's, I don't know. I mean, you tell me. Does it say they are here that the Muslim, they accuse him to be a fraud? Do you see it? The Muslims accuse him to be a fraud and Allah, he sent them a verse to confirm that he is not a fraud. What, what, is, the, what is behind the story? There's a book, it's called Asbab al-Nuzul. Do you know the book? Yeah, I know. All right. 
we can go to any tafsir you wish anyway i mean not necessarily this one you know but we will, we will see we will try to, to know what what this is mean chapter 3 verse 161 okay <clears throat> i mean the one is calling like don't you see i'm talking to that gentleman here why you keep calling wait until he hang up and then we take your call what's wrong with people all right we go to 161 Read with me, please. This is Tafsir al When some red velvet cloth went missing in the day of Badr, and some pe uh, some began to say perhaps the Prophet took it, the following was revealed. It's not for a Prophet to be a fraud to Yahul. You said there's no way the Prophet, he does that. If yes, why are the Muslims accusing their Prophet that he stole an underwear? Well, it's just some people they accused him. It wasn't proven. Some people they are Muslims. Right? Well, he is the best yeah, man. For his, okay, that, but that's mean. You see, if I am the best man between them, there, I, I will be the last one to be accused. Correct. But if there is somebody have a reputation of being a thief, he will be the first to be accused. So there is many people they were there. Why they accuse only Muhammad? Uh, I don't know. Like just because they accuse him doesn't mean that it's true. It's, it says even red velvet cloth. It doesn't say panties. Oh, this and, is the, this uh, is the Muslim translation. No problem. Okay, it's a piece of a cloth. It doesn't matter. It's a laundry. It's a laundry of somebody. He was killed, and they took his clothes. The Muslim they attacked them, and they took their clothes. I mean, what kind of a savage people they do that? Same time, what kind of a prophet is accused by his followers that he stole a piece of a cloth, regardless if it's a panty or a bikini or even a, a, a Gucci suit? What kind of a followers they accuse their best man? They did not accuse Omar or, or uh, Abu Bakr. They did not accuse uh, uh, anyone. They accuse Muhammad himself, the prophet, the trustworthy, the best of mankind, that he took it. The Muslims, this is this is how Muslims, they see their prophet. Well, Moses murdered, uh, killed people when they started worshipping a calf in the Bible. My friend, so, what does this have to do like... with this? What does this have to do with this? I'm asking you about um, a prophet of God accused of theft by the Muslims. Accused but not, but never proven. So okay, it's a pro no, it's a proven to be true. Look, because look what happened when the Muslims accuse Muhammad that he is stolen the piece of a cloth, the underwear. Allah He sent the verse saying it's not him, and this is confirmed it's him. Do you know why? Why? Because if Allah is almighty and he knows everything, shouldn't he tell us who is the one who took it? If it's not Muhammad. So look what happened. We have a God. He is in the seven galaxy and then we have a bunch of ants, you know, because we are like a size of an ant for God. Correct. Do you agree? We are like ants. Yes. So a bunch of ants are fighting over an underwear. And then God, the one who created the galaxies, the one who created the stars, the one who created this massive space and amazing universe, he speak about what? About a story involving a piece of a cloth. To defend who? To defend Muhammad who was accused of a theft. And yet he do not know who is the one who took it because if this is coming from God if this verse is coming from God not from Muhammad He should say go to the house of this guy. You will find the panty there And then that said bingo people they go there they open the drawer of this guy They found the clothes there and they got him busted But look what Muhammad did he created the verse saying it is not Allah said to me. It's not Muhammad It's not Muhammad Khabibi not Muhammad. So who is who is the one if Allah he told you to say to them It's not Muhammad who stole it why he did not tell you who is the one who took it? Wait, so you're saying that because uh, God said that the Prophet did not steal this clothes, uh, such, it's such a stupid topic. So that means that it's not from God because he would not say something that's so trivial? Because now saying, because right? now he did not took it. So what is the proof? He should, he should clear his name. How to clear the name? How to clear the name of somebody? If somebody accuses you of a guilt, how to clear his name? But just by saying he did not do it? No. You give him, you give them the real name, the one who did it, because obviously somebody took it, right? Somebody took it. 
Okay, what about you give us the name and that will clear the name of Muhammad and people will know right away that this is was a was a mistake, should not be happened. But to say it's not Muhammad, that confirm it's Muhammad. That confirm that Muhammad is the one who made this verse. If somebody accused me of killing somebody or raping some women or doing something ugly, and then God wanna prove that I am not guilty, how he can do that? Have you ever heard of a court? You go to the court, you say it's not him. You have to bring him the one. Okay, who is the one who did it? They are accusing him. You have to bring. You have to bring evidence. Even Columbus, the the detective, he will not do that. Even the monk, the the guy in the movie, you know, like the the Lebanese guy, uh, Tony Shalhoub, he will not do that. So, what kind of God he answered in such a way? It's not Muhammad who did that. Because uh, simply I he did not prove anything. I understand what you're saying, but I think you're contradicting yourself because if if God, uh, like. If he says the name of the person who stole the panties, mm -hmm. so God is basically talking about panties in the end. So that's also like. A well, this is about matter. panty anyway. The, who is who is more important now? The important is to clean the name of Muhammad. Don't talk about panty. Don't mention the word panty. Don't mention the word the bra. Mention the name of the one who did that. To say it's not Muhammad who did that. This is a joke. What is the proof? What is my proof that Muhammad is the one who made this verse itself saying it's Allah he told me to tell you it's not me who took it that's will be funny imagine you go to court and the court accused me that I am a thief I took uh, something from somebody and then I say to them oh God just told me to tell you this it is not for CP to steal and the court will say sure as long God he told you okay go bye bye you are right this is stupid that's silly until now, the one who took the panty is missing, and the panty is missing. Until now, after 1400 years, the panty cannot be found. And if you go to the Saudi Arabia website, you will find the big reward for the one who can lead us to the one who took the panty. So, what kind of God he comes with such a verse which is silly and uh, does, does not make any sense? Uh, I don't really th like, I don't see how does that like prove that. Uh, the, 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 this verse was written by the prophet like there's nothing wrong with with God sending down a verse saying that his prophet is is innocent He doesn't have to interfere like in the affairs my, of my, my friend my friend No, he have he have to interfere because now he is trying to prove to us that he's innocent. He did not prove to us He's innocent now There's no proof Because who is the one who did it? Nobody knows Which mean obviously Allah do not know because if Allah knows let us say it's not Muhammad who took it anyway Let us say it was a false accusation until now, nobody knows who is the one who took this piece of a cloth. Okay, why Allah don't want to expose a thief? In Islam, stealing is a, is, is a crime, is it? Yeah. Okay, shouldn't we do the punishment of Allah upon the one who took the st stole? Yes. So that will do justice. Not only will clear the name of Muhammad, because this is an ugly crime, happened and now is accusing Muhammad. It's causing Muhammad to be accused of a crime, which means it is double sin not once it's not only just he stole it is he is he causing the prophet to be accused by that theft so it is it is a must to clear his name by telling us who is the one who took it but because muhammad he knew that he is the one who took it so he fabricated well, uh, a verse but the verse does not say who is the one who took it i believe that everything god says or does is, is for a reason so god obviously he cleared uh the prophet's name by saying that he's innocent mm. and then it's the people's job to find out who did it okay my friend you see forget about everything we said you just say that god it, it do everything for a reason do you agree yeah okay yeah. what is the reason to send muhammad uh the reason to send muhammad is mm. to uh to bring back the the true monotheism, which is the the true religion of Islam, because uh, Judaism it's it's kind of like uh, it's like I don't know I feel like it's too much about race like they kind of took they it's like they made a monopoly on God and about then obviously race? what do you mean like uh, like Judaism I think you you have to be like Jewish or something of Jewish or origin to be mm. like a Jew or mm. something and and Christianity like uh, they worship a man. Mm. And and like there's obviously other pagan religions and stuff. So then God sent down uh, the prophet to be the to bring the true monothe monotheistic religion, Islam, to worship one. Okay, God. let us take it one by one. Is it is it the fault? Uh, are you saying the Jews they made the religion as a racist, like it's uh, that that they are they are favorite upon mankind and they are better? Yeah. 
Okay. Because so, anybody should be able to worship God. Okay. So that that mean that mean they are racist if they if they have the idea that they are favorite upon all mankind. They are better than all mankind. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is what the Quran said, my friend. You just said yeah. Thank you very much. If we go to chapter two, verse number forty-seven, it is Allah who said that Allah He favored the Jews upon all mankind. Obviously, your God was a Zionist in certain point of the time. Read with me. This is chapter 2 verse number 47 children of Israel remember my blessing wherewith I blessed you and that I have preferred you above all being and you are the one saying to me that this is racist which means this is ugly this is disgusting this is bad but it was Allah who preferred the Jews upon all mankind uh... Well, I mean, like, uh, uh huh. But like, uh -huh. they they kind of they fell from God's grace, like the mistake. Yeah, but a second ago, my friend, you said something different. You say that the Jews they think they are better than others, and I I want to be sure what you mean. I said to you, do you think this is racist and this is ugly because they think they are better than mankind? You said yes, and you agreed, and now we find that it was the fault the fault of Allah. It's not the fault of the Jews. Allah He said to them, I favor you upon all mankind. Uh, I forgot about that verse. <clears throat> ah, okay. Let us be consistent. If somebody he think that he is above mankind, he is racist, as you said. Isn't it Allah? He said that the Muslims are above all mankind. The the Muslims said that they are above all mankind. Yes. Uh, no. Okay. Let us see. Read with me this hadith, please. <clears throat> okay. You are the best people. You are the best of people ever raised up, and then between two brackets for the benefit of mankind. Chapter three, verse one ten. The best for mankind are those who bring them with a chain around their necks, till they embrace Islam. What do you uh, think I about this? Huh? I don't see the hadith on the the video on your. Channel. Well, it's maybe it's coming. Maybe you have a delay, guys. Is it coming in your side? Do you see the hadith in the, in the screen? So, based in your explanation, Islam is a racist cult. Make people believe that they are better than other people. Not only that, Allah He gave them a duty to go and kill and enslave and put the chains around the necks of people. In order supposedly to save them from hellfire now very nice of you you know you come and you put a chain around my neck and you drag me like a dog or a donkey and that because you are a good guy you take me into slavery because you are a good guy because you want to save uh, me is this, is this hadith sahih well obviously it is well can i see it like i want to see the here we go I'm showing it to you. Why don't see it? I don't know. This is the book of Riyadh al-Salihin. And the hadith number is 32. So what do you think? Uh, well, uh, Well, well. You want to call a friend? Uh, I don't. I don't agree with. The... You don't agree with your prophet? But... Did you say you don't agree with the prophet? Did you no, say? Did you say you don't agree with the prophet? It's not that. I think this this hadith is like, uh, like maybe the, it's like it was it was uh, it was wrongly like what's it called. The trans transmission. There was like the, the trans transmission. You see, I, before I used to have a car older than this one. My car now is like fifteen years old, but I used to have an older one. The transmission it was very. Bad. What did the transmission, my friend? This is your prophet. This is your books. This is your. This is your. Your Muslims are the one who's saying that. It's not me. 
I don't I don't believe in in like in this like I think the hadith that like maybe they're wrong because they were they were written 200 250 years after the prophet's death like how do we know that he said that so uh, how you know who said that okay what about the Quran it says in chapter 3 verse 10 Allah he says that he made the Muslims are the best of mankind and you are the one who said to me the one who think he is the best of mankind he's being racist the best nation for the mankind of the mankind who are the Muslim chapter this is Quran what we would do with the Quran now there's a wrong with the transmission to you show me the verse uh -huh. are you are you saying you don't believe it I don't I don't I don't remember it I don't mm. think there's okay no, no problem no problem my friend <clears throat> We go. Do you see it? Hold on. Hmm. This is a chapter three, verse one or ten. One, one. Yeah, 10, I sorry. see it. Okay, and you are the one who said, if you believe in such a thing, you must be a racist, and this is ugly. And the hadith there explained by Muhammad. How you should treat people as a best man of mankind you as a best your your duty is to go and kill them and enslave them and put the chains around their necks as if they are dogs and this is mentioned in many books by the way including Sahih al-Bukhari this is Sahih al-Bukhari well, this is Sahih al-Bukhari now this is not the book you can run away from this is Sahih al-Bukhari the verse you true Muslims are the best of people ever raised for mankind means the best of the people for people as uh, as you bring them with the chains on their necks till they embrace Islam and Muslim they say to us Islam mean peace I mean obviously it mean peace uh, Islam means submission hmm with my respect to you, who, yeah. who is the donkey? He said that to you. Uh, it's, it's not. It's not like I, I know this. Islam, like some people, they think that Islam means peace, but like the the true meaning is is like silm. Islam is coming from the root word silm. Salim. Okay, no. Okay, so, did you say the word silm? Did you say the word silm? Yes. Okay. Well, to God, well oh, no, 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 my friend, you have no idea what are you talking about. Do Do you know who I am first? Uh. Well. What, what do you mean? Who are you? I mean, obviously, you do not know you are talking to who. Anything you say in my present will be used against you. Any word you say, you just say the word Salem, did you? And you said yes, Islam sir. is coming from Salem. Well, here we go. Allah, He forbid you from Salem. Uh, no. Okay. No, we have to submit, though. The whole premise is called Hold Islam on. because we okay. submit. Let us see. Let us see. Let us see if you are saying the truth or not. Okay. You say that Allah, He told you to go for Salem. Because Islam is coming from Salm. Here we go. In Arabic it says, فَلَا تَهِنُوا وَتَدْعُوا إِلَى السَّلْمُ وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ Translation. This is chapter 47, chapter of Muhammad. So do not faint and call for peace. You shall be the upper ones. Which means, never call for Salm, which means peace, when you are the uppermost. So Islam forbid you from going for peace. Uh, the, I, I remember that the fear of this verse was when if, if you're the if you're like being persecuted like if you're persecuted and really the only thing, yes really okay what what the fear yeah. is that what the fear give me his name this guy who said that to you well, I can I can bring I can bring you the tafsir right now okay you this want is, uh, okay let us go this is this is the Quran in front of us chapter 47 verse number 35 47 35 okay this is your official government website and here we go to the verse okay this is what the verse is saying don't call for peace until you kill them all because you are victorious what you are saying is absolutely false Uh, wait, hold up. My video is loading. Mm. Okay, I see it. So do not falter. Do not be weak. And do not call for peace. 
as to say truce with disbelievers should you encounter them when you have the upper hand? Mm -hmm. <coughs> when uh, when you are the can you show me the whole thing like just zoom out so I can see all the words? I'm showing you all thing. No, you don't see all thing. Hold on. Let me be sure you see all the hold on. Uh, nothing missing actually. You see everything. This is the end of it. So you cannot be seeking peace when you are the uppermost. As simple as that. It's forbidden Islam. You can seek peace only if you are weak. Like now, in, I think you're an Egyptian. In Egypt, they sign a peace agreement with the Jews. But this is temporarily because this is against Allah wish. But Allah, he gave you a permission to sign peace agreement as long as you are not the uppermost. And that's what your prophet he did. But when he was not the uppermost, he signed a peace agreement until he got stronger. And then he killed them all. And that's what the verse is saying. So you are saying to me, Islam is coming from the word Selm, which is false. Because here we go. Don't, don't, don't even try to get close to Selm. As long as you are uppermost. Which means if the Muslims now are the uppermost, they will be slaughtering 7 billion human beings. Uh, al alun here does not mean the if you're winning in battle it means al alun means you my are, friend you're superior by your faith my friend no no this is about superior with your with your power to vanquish read it it's in front of you so do not filter flatter do not be weak do not call for peace read uh, uh, read selm or selm that is to say a, a truce a, a, a trust with the disbelievers should encounter them when you have the upper hand upper hand in what in war this is uh tafsir jalalain yeah if you want we can change it for you no problem yeah i want to see the other tafsirs like okay uh, no problem Kathir. in this website here Okay, let's see the English first. This is Ibn Abbas. And we will show you Ibn Kathir, no problem. All is the same. You want me to open Ibn Kathir? I will open Ibn Kathir for you. This is Ibn Abbas, the cousin of your prophet. Do you want to make a theory? Yeah. Okay. No problem. We are here to to help the Muslims to understand their cult. We go to Ibn Kathir. Okay, so right. do not falter, do not. Let us see. Go to Ibn Kathir, the verse. Okay, here we go. Here we go, read it. This is Ibn Kathir. I think the word is clear and big. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I see it. So, okay, uh, Allah. So, should not lose heart and beg for peace. You cannot, should not beg for peace, beg for war. As long as you are superior. You say superior by religion, that's not true. Superior by, by, by war. Um, well, uh, this is, uh, you see, it says here, it says in front of you, it says, if if the disbelievers are considered 
more powerful and numerous than Muslims then the Imam general commander may decide to hold a treaty me which mean if you are not equal to them you will not make it then you go for treaty fool them say we want to have peace lie to them taqiyya say I want to have peace I want to be peaceful people let us sign peaceful agreement but this is until you are the uppermost you, you are the one who chose Ibn Kathir, my friend. It's not my fault. Uh, well, the Quran is like, it's uh, it says like a guide. We shouldn't like take everything. My friend, aren't you the one who said to me, you want to see Ibn Kathir? Yeah. Okay. And this is Ibn Kathir. So what we will do now? Well, well let I, me, okay. Forget about this. You know, let, let it go. Let it go. What about here? It says, Why? Why, you Muslims, you have to obey Allah and Muhammad? Why you don't need to obey Allah only? If Muhammad is just a servant of Allah, who need to obey Muhammad? Because when you obey Allah, you obey everything, correct? You are, you are in the right track. Why the Quran says, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger and do not infidelate your deeds. So if you don't obey Muhammad, you are not a Muslim if you obey Allah but you didn't obey Muhammad you are a bad person you will go to hell you say to me that you Muslims believe in one God obviously Muhammad here he put the name his name and his obedience equal to obedience of Allah because you cannot obey Allah alone you have to obey Allah and Muhammad isn't it this is shirk Uh, well, Muhammad is the prophet, so if he like, we should uh, if what he says is the uh, from God, so we should. It's just like we're basically obeying no problem. God. What he say from God, then you should obey God. Why you put the name of Muhammad there? If 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 what he said from God, say obey God. Why he put his name there? If I say to you that I am a prophet and God told me to do that, then obey God, not obey me. Why I put myself between why Allah is putting his name supposedly the one is talking here is Allah why he says obey Allah and And by the way how Allah he says obey Allah. I mean have you ever heard of this? If I am a Christian Prince, I say to you obey Christian Prince and obey Muhammad. I am a Christian Prince Well, God is speaking in in third person here because uh, to like sig like uh I don't know like I think to signify power no it's like he's sort of uh, like you know like and uh, uh, like speaking when when it says we in the Quran it does not mean that there's multiple gods it's, it's one God but he's using the royal we royal we so Allah is is, is seeking royal Allah is seeking royal the no, God but... Almighty he is changing his definition by saying we because a king Hussein he said um, we is that a, is that really a, a reason if he is one, why he say we royal? Allah is trying to speak like the kings, but any king can say that we. This well, is the, this is Bible a false. Also... Now listen, 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 we... listen, listen. When Muhammad, when Muhammad he says, any Muslim woman she want to give out her panty to the Prophet, is that an order from Allah or this is an order from a horny man? His name is Muhammad. The the Prophet never never said that. Never said that. Well, the verse in the Quran yeah. says, and any woman, any Muslim woman, she want to give herself to the Prophet so he can if her. Uh, I mean, like, uh, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Like he can this is coming. This is coming from God. Any woman she want to if the Prophet. I mean, the, the man he have many wives already. Why he need God to make for him such a verse? What do you mean? Why God the, the Muhammad he have many wives what does have to do with Islam now? Muhammad is a prophet of God. He came to tell us about God Muhammad He want to spread Islam Muhammad want to convert us to Islam, but Muhammad now he want the vagina of our women What does have to do with Islam? Why any believing women she have a chance and Muhammad giving her a, a great opportunity It's Allah is asking the believers Allah asking the Muslim women any believing women she want to give herself to the prophet so he can yes thank you how it means so he can if her i mean what what this have to do with god who is the one getting the benefit of this if in business the monkey business muhammad 
the one who created the universe the one who created the, the the whole world is making a verse says hey hey female any one of you would like to have a bang bang being born with the prophet give yourself to the prophet come on come on come on show me silence me teach me i mean come on well like uh, this is uh well, maybe like like the Quran, it's it's not all of it is God's word. Like maybe the, like like the prophet, uh, he, he put some like words in it. I don't know. What do you mean? What does this have to do with God? You see, I am a Christian prince. Let us say I am claiming that I am a prophet, and then I come here in this chat. I have like one thousand people listening, and I say to them, "Hey, females in the you know who want to sleep with me? Come on, this is crazy. This is sick. This is can't be from God." Muhammad already had many wives. He had many slave girls sleeping with them. Why he need a verse from God to say any women she want to give her so that the prophet obviously Muhammad now taking advantage of the people he became a prophet he became powerful and he want to have sex with everybody he don't even respect his followers otherwise you tell me what is the benefit of this what does this have to do with God why God he was putting his his nose in the panty of Muhammad and the panties of the believers this is about panties about our sex and Muhammad is not a single guy so Allah he's trying to find him a good wife. He have many wives already. So what this is about? It's very obvious that Muhammad is fabricating a verse, trying to get women into his bed, claiming that God told him he's not the guy who cared for that man and busy. And look what happened. When ugly women they start coming to Muhammad, what Muhammad what Muhammad he did? Muhammad he said to himself, uh oh, I'm getting many ugly women now after I made this verse. So what I will do. I am going uh, to make another verse says I have the right to choose the one I like and I will uh, refuse the one I don't like I mean have you ever heard of madness like this look what he said you O Muhammad SAW can postpone the women who you you will postpone what does that mean Women they start coming to Muhammad, they are ugly, and he don't like how they look like. So Muhammad he starts saying, Oh, oh, I said whoever a Muslim woman she can give herself to me, and now I have a lot of them, and many of them they are ugly. So how I can get rid of them? So he created another verse saying, Allah he told me I can postpone upon any one of you, and I choose the one I like. I mean, isn't it this is obvious? So Christian Prince, he says, who is a Muslim female? Muhammad, the Christian Prince. Who is a female? A Muslim, Muhammad, Fatima, Khadija, Aisha, want to sleep with me. And then all the women, they came to my door. And I look from the window, and I see very scary women outside waiting for me to have sex with them. So now I have to save myself from this. So I would, I do, I create a verse, says, Allah told me I can choose and I pick as I like. Okay, thank you for coming. You, you, the woman who there, you are very old and you are overqualified for the business. You, you are overweight. So thank you very much. You, uh, you know, I don't like really your face. So you are overqualified too. I mean, what kind of a prophet this prophet is? Uh, wait, so this verse is saying that he can postpone the turn of uh, whom you will. What, what does that mean? The women who is coming to have sex with him. You see, the Muslim in the translation, they lie. They say wives. There's none of them became a wife. Not even one of them became a wife. Those women, they want to sleep with him because he just told them in the previous verse, any one of, the, of, of them, they want to sleep with you. They are welcome. Uh, you, mean, you mean marry them, right? Not what marry them? <laughs> Okay, name for me one of the women who gave herself to Muhammad became a wife. Go ahead. He did not marry any of them. Never. It's just for sex. Sexy club. The Prophet sexy club. Uh, can you show me like the, the, the whole verse just so much so I can so I can read? I'm showing the you verse. the whole verse. Okay, we go. You can read it, my friend. You can open your Quran from your side if you want. And then here it says, and any believing women, any believing women, you know, we can change the translation if you want. I mean, this may translation here. If you don't like this translation, we can change it. You know, 
Arī vai jūlieši? Uh, this is verse 51 of which chapter? Verse number 50 and 51 in chapter 33. Any woman want to give herself to the prophet, give herself to the prophet. Imagine we say to those people here, they are watching, hey, Christian prince, Muhammad Hijab, he accept donation as cash and women, please. I mean, come on. Women? I mean, we, we arrive to the point we have no shame to say that any woman she want to give herself to the prophet? Why is that? What does this have to do with God? How I can serve God by saying any woman she can sleep with me? Unless you're Muslim, you believe that when Muhammad have sex, he have orgasm and Allah, he have orgasm by Muhammad. Otherwise, what joy that will bring to Allah? Uh, I don't know. This is... Mm. Disgusting, isn't it? You have to agree, my friend. Come on. I advise you to leave Islam immediately. Well, uh, I don't know because like... Well... Come on, be honest with yourself. You, you see, you are a gentleman. You are a gentleman. And I'm sure you don't accept such a thing. I don't think your family, I don't think your, 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 your history, I don't think your mother, your father are bad people. I think you are coming from a good family. So how in the world you accept such a man come to you and says, any woman she can give herself to me? What does this have to do with God? What servant I'm doing to God by sleeping with Muhammad? Be honest with yourself, my friend. You see, I'm not against you. When I talk to Muslims, Muslims, they think I hate them. I don't hate Muslims. I would never hate them. My Lord, he, he, he ordered me to love everybody. So I am here trying to help you to show you that what you believe in is a scam. This man is not speaking for God. He's speaking for his panty. He's speaking for his private part. What's the point of this? You see, giving charity, I understand why giving charity is very good. Helping others is very good. But, and, and, you know, all good things to do for others are very good. But to do it for Muhammad, it's about sex. And you will see here, it says it's a privilege only for Muhammad. This is a privilege only for Muhammad. Why Muhammad, he needs such a privilege? What that privilege will, 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 will do for him? What that privilege will do to God? Why the, the rest of the Muslims do not have such a privilege? You need to ask yourself, my friend, when God, he gave a privilege to someone, what this purpose of this privilege? Is that going to make Islam better? Is that going to convince the Christians that Muhammad is a decent man? Oh. Actually, I can show you where, where your book saying that if the prophet, his eyes fall into a woman, her husband, he must divorce her immediately. Do you believe it? Wait, come again? Your books, it's your books, your Islamic book says that if the prophet, his eyes fall into a woman, which means a woman, she was walking down the street and Muhammad, uh, he saw her. Her husband, he have to divorce her immediately so the prophet can sleep with her. Uh, can I see that verse? All right, not verse. This is the, this is in your books. Give me a second. Okay, here we go. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of, of, of Saudi Arabia. And read with me here what it says. Amazing.
You see the, the, the page, right? Muhammad, he been given 16 privilege. 16 privilege. The first one, Safiyul Magnam, which means the best of the booty. So if you if we attack a house, the big the big screen TV go to the prophet. The small TV goes for you. Al istibdadu bi khums al khums. Fifth of the booty will go to him. This is the second one. The three is al wisal. The fourth is al ziyada fi arba nuswa, which means to have more than four women. Every Muslim can have only four. Al khamis al nikah bi lafz al hiba. Any woman she can give herself by just saying that. There's no need for witnesses. No need. He can just if her. A sadis and nikah hubila wali. A woman she can give herself to the Prophet without permission from her parents. Imagine a Muslim, he cannot do that. A woman she can do that to Muhammad only. A sabi and nikah hubi sidaq. Muhammad, he do not need to pay dowry for the women. A thamin nikah fil ihat lihram. Even when he is doing ihram, he can have sex, but Muslims cannot. A tasa suqut al qasamu bin al azwaj. He used to take an oath. Number nine, he can take an oath. And he can break the oath only him Muslims cannot do that when he take an oath for women and Al Asher either Waka Basara who Allah Imra Wajaba Allah Zoji Hatalakiha Wahala Lahuni Kahua. The mic is yours. Translate, please. Uh, where should I translate? Is a Waka Basara who if he sees a woman, uh, her husband has to divorce her and she's. Uh, she is permissible for him to uh, F her. Okay, what do you think of this? Why, if your prophet saw a woman, her husband must divorce her immediately so the prophet he can sleep with her? Uh, well, uh, this is like, uh, what servant? What, what 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 that have to do with God, my friend? What did that have to do with God? Imagine I am a person trying to say to you that I am here coming to serve God. I'm a servant of God. God He sent me to you. And then I say to you, if I see your wife and I like her, you have to divorce her so I can sleep with her. What kind of religion this religion is? Well, I mean, like uh, in the Bible, uh, Solomon had 700 wives. My friend, my friend, the Bible is a book of history and the book of God, which means history of people with God. So in the Bible, it might say Christian prince, he commits sin. It might say Christian prince commit adultery. It might say that Christian prince, he killed people. It might say Christian prince, he have a thousand women. But it's not God who told him to have and to do. There's a huge difference here. This guy he claimed that this is coming from his God. We have in the Bible many people who commit sin and they are asking God for forgiveness. As an example, David himself. He commits sin and he asks God for forgiveness. He did not say that God told me to look at this woman, uh, this woman, and he in and, and sleep with her. He did not make an excuse that this is coming from God. What your prophet doing, he wants women to sleep with him, and he claim it is God. This is a privilege from God. This is not his fault. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think you're right. This is like wrong. So, my friend, thank you very much. You see, you are a decent man. This guy, I told you, I, I have a feeling about about people. You know, this person is coming from a good family. There's no way his owner will accept such a thing. If Muhammad tried to do that to your wife, I'm sure you will kill him because you have an honor. You are not a trashy person who will accept such a thing. You have dignity. Yeah, this is wrong. So denounce Islam, my friend. Say Islam is obviously Muhammad is a false prophet. That's it. Get out of this cult. They fool you. They say to him, he's a trustworthy. He is the good guy. He is the perfect man. He is the perfect between the best of mankind. They worship him. They made him in a in a point that nobody even dared to question his honor. But the second we start reading, and we did not even read much. There is tons of stories. Disgusting. We are just scratching the surface outside, and look what we found. And as long as you agree that this is wrong, 
That's mean Muhammad can't be a prophet. Correct, my friend? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm so happy for you that you decide to leave Islam. But like, I, I don't know, like, if Islam is wrong, like, then like, uh, like, what's, what's the truth? Like, my friend, I don't know. My I've friend, been raised I advise you, I advise you to go and download the, the Bible, the, the, the New Testament, because the New Testament is about Jesus and his teaching. The Old Testament is history and a lot of history. Read the teaching of Jesus and see what Jesus is about. Muhammad, obviously, he's a person working for his own. He, he opened a corporation. He put the title of God, but the fact behind the title, there's something else. There's someone trying to use you and abuse you and take advantage of you. Read about Jesus. You will see it's the opposite. You are the one who said to me the Christian believe that God died for them. So look, 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 look how different is Jesus and Muhammad. Jesus, he came to us to save us, and even his life paid to save me. He did not ask me for a return. And look at this guy, he wants to sleep with my wife. Jesus, he did not ask for money. Imagine if Jesus he can raise people from death. How many kings they will give him everything they have? All the kings in the world, they will be his slaves. Just keep me alive, please. Each time I die, keep me alive. If Jesus will abuse his power, which is beyond imagination, what Jesus can do? So I invite you right now, my friend, to accept the Messiah as your savior. You breathe, but there is no guarantee that you will breathe tomorrow. Maybe you are young, but don't worry. There's many people, they are young and they die before the old one. Maybe you are 10 years old. Maybe you are 50 years old. Maybe you are 18 years old, but death come any moment, any second. And then you will not earn your salvation. I invite you right now as we speak to accept the Messiah, the amazing teaching of the Messiah, the Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah, Yeshua al Messiah, the only Savior, the one who says, love your enemy. The one who said it's been said to you, but I say to you, for he have the authority. If somebody asks you for your code, give him your address. If somebody asks you to walk a step with him, walk with him 1,000. If somebody curse you, pray for him. Don't curse him and kill him. He did not say to people, give me your women. He did not say, give me your, 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 your money. God do not need money. And even servant of God. The second a man he works to serve money, it's mean he is serving the devil. The second a man he serves sex, it's mean he is serving the devil. You see, all of us we are sinners, and me and you we are not better. We we get tempted. We get tempted by women. We get tempted by 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 sex, by 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 money. But we don't claim that God is telling me to do that. That's disgusting. That is an insult to God. If God is a true exist. So I invite you right now, my friend, to accept the Messiah as your savior. And you cannot say one day, I never heard of you, the Messiah, because one day the time will come and the Messiah will ask you, did the person, his name is a Christian prince, say to you, I invite you to accept me as your savior. And you said, no. What do you oh, want to say, my friend? I I, I like the the message of Christianity, like love and forgiveness. I think that uh, that's like nice. So uh, I don't know. You know, my friend. You know, it's not only about forgiveness. It's not only about love. You see, the first thing Jesus teach you is not to be selfish. When when they asked Jesus how to pray, he said he told them, "Pray like this: Our Father out of heaven." And then he said. Forgive to us the same as we forgive to others. This is not about forgiveness. This is about not being selfish, not about to think about yourself. You see, the problem in this earth is everybody think of himself the same as Muhammad. He want to sleep with all the women. But he is not thinking about the women. He's not thinking about their husband. He's not thinking about the feeling of those people using them and abusing them, sleeping around and then dumping them. He is thinking only about himself. That is the devil. Selfishness. Is about being satanic. Jesus is anti 
selfishness. Serve others so you can be served. When Jesus, he said to his followers, I want to wash your feet. They said to him, what are you talking about? You are our God. How you can wash our feet? They refuse. He said to them, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. Imagine God himself who is coming to us as a man. He is humbling himself and washing our feet. Why Jesus is doing that? He don't need to do that. This person is resurrecting people from death. Is this person is making the blind see? This person is amazing. People they are a mule. Like I mean, what? Whoa, whoa! This man, what he can do? And then he said to them, "I want to wash your feet." Because Jesus want to give us the best example how you can be a follower of Him. If you want to follow me, you wash the feet. To be a master, you have to be a servant. You do what servants do. You don't do what masters do. People, they want to be masters to have servant. Jesus wants you to be a servant, then you are a master. And that's my Lord. So I truly, from my heart, my friend, I invite you to accept the Messiah because this is an opportunity. It might not come to you again. I accept them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A happiness in the kingdom of God. A happiness in the kingdom of God for this brother who accepted the Messiah as his savior. The Bible says that a happiness in the kingdom of God will be for one, one soul is saved. This is how much God he loves you, my friend. And now you are a child of God. Child of God does not mean that God have sex with Mary and you have his son. Child of God, that's mean you are in his kingdom. You are under his care. You are under his protection. You are beloved for him. He is always about love. You made a decision you will never regret. And the Lord, he love you, my friend. I'm so happy today that you called me. I'm so happy that you reach the right decision. Uh, thank you. Um, I uh, I'll have to keep this secret because like uh, I, my family wouldn't like it. But I'll, I'll start reading the Bible and uh, learn. All right, my friend. If you have any question, feel free to call me. All right. And there's a brother. His name is Sam Shamoon. He have a channel in YouTube. He teach the Bible. You can ask him questions. He would be happy to teach you. Just tell him Christian Prince send it to send me to you. And I left Islam and I accepted the Messiah. He will be happy to help you. Okay. All right, my friend. I'm so happy for you. I don't even know your name, but I don't care. For the Lord, He knows your name. For the Lord, He knows us one by one. And Jesus, He said, that from their fruits, you shall know them. Your name is not important. Your name might be Muhammad, but the Lord, He loves you. Your name is not what will define you from today. It is who you are. From their fruits, you will know them and you will notice my friend that you will change you will be a different person you are not a black stone kisser no more you are not in need to pray in direction of a stone god is everywhere and god he don't care for people who pray in the corner actually jesus he warned us not to be like them not to be hypocrite he said when you pray go to your closet so i advise you today before you sleep my friend Anytime you wish, don't force yourself on a certain time to pray. This is Christianity. This is not Islam. God is not a bus station. He will take your prayer in a certain time. If you miss it, he will not take it. That is a joke. Anytime you feel like your heart when to speak to the Lord, speak to him. Say whatever you wish. He is listening. Be decent with yourself. Confess your sin. Say, God, I am a sinner. Speak about your sin. Not because you are proud of it. But because you are humble and you know that you are wrong may the lord bless you my friend and again i'm so happy that you called me if you have any other friends who would like to call me i will be happy to talk to them and bring them to the truth and the truth will set you free thank you very much take care my friend thank you very much for your call and may the lord bless you take care